What's up, Face Off fanatics? Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Face Off. I am, of course, the voice, the very essence of the Movie Trivia Face Off, Andrew the Elk Kelk. And as always, it's a pleasure for you to be here with me, but also a pleasure to be here with me as we've got a fantastic Geektacular match coming your way. My co-host on the desk, and oh, for once, it's not somebody with the last name Garcia. One of my favorite people in the Movie Trivia Face Off, Alex the Goth Father. Frost, thank you so much for joining me. Looking forward to this match with you today. Uh, my vacation's over, but it's so much better to be here with you. The best announcing team in the league is back together again. The road to World War Geek is on, and it is paved with exactly two things, wins and losses. One of these guys going forward in the game. The other one is going to have to stay and watch. I could not have said it better myself. We've got two competitors coming in today, and it's all about that entry into World War Geek. It's all about getting that win, getting on the board. We've got Jonathan, the Raptor Master Peck, coming back in. We've seen Jonathan before. We know what he's capable of, and maybe he's hoping he'll perform a little better in this matchup. Either way, we know he's got some knowledge. Very impressive competitor. And coming up against him, we've got a new player. That's right. We've got the Hellhound, and I love that name. That's a good one. He's coming in for his very first matchup, Devontae King. Uh, what do you think? What are you, we're going we're to see today as these two fight it out for their spot in World War Geek, Alex? Well, what you're talking about is you're talking about somebody that's never at all competed in the game before versus somebody that's taken somebody like a Caleb Goho to a two or a three pointer. That is a significant amount of experience. He's going to play like a veteran and Devonte, he's going to have to do the same there. Th this is how you get up brought up to speed in the geektacular. It's running starts only. All right, that's right. They are going to compete hard. They're going to fight hard in this Geektacular League with a spectacular matchup. Let's go ahead and cut to the promos and hear what the competitors have to say to each other. Well, well, well. Hey, people, I'm back. Yeah, this is me, the Raptor Master here, and... For those of you who don't know right here, I competed the Geek Format before right here, and and I'll just say my last couple instances from last year didn't exactly what I hope or anticipate for me. Right now, I took like a couple months off right here, did some little soul searching right here, and right now, I'm reborn, I'm back right here. The Raptor Master is here right now, I'm hoping to get my very first victory in this Geek right here, and on my search to World War Geek. Hi, right, so, uh... I'm the, I guess I'm the new guy here, Devonte King, the Hellhound. Um, I'm just here trying to have some fun, trying to qualify for World War Geek, and uh, trying to become the new uh, new Inner Geekdom champion here. I guess I'm playing some one who's played before. I really don't know his name. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, have a good match get a couple points, have some fun, and, you know, hopefully we'll see see where, lay, where, uh, where this all lays at the end. So, I can't wait for my new competitor is apparently a rookie around here, which, uh, can't think of his name, like, Rashu or, uh, uh, like, a Hellhound. Is that what he's called, like, Hellhound right there? It's kind of like a rejected script from a Ghostbusters film or something like that, but... Anyway, right here, I'm here. The Raptor Master's here, so I can't wait to show people what I'm all about this time around in 2020. We are back. I've got two competitors coming in. We've got two promos down. And one thing that I think we can say for sure, Alex Frost, if I'm not mistaken, these two competitors may or may not know each other's names. Well, we've had a few mix-ups here already. It could be a huge advantage for either of them. They just have to capitalize on it. Well, even if they don't know each other's names, hopefully they will know a few correct answers. And I know their names because I'm a professional. So let's bring them on in here and get this match underway. Let's do it. Introducing first, 
He is the Raptor Master, Jonathan Peck. Woo! All right, good to see you, Jonathan. That's a nice hat. Let's get him to the table and let's bring in his opponent, making his movie a trivia face-off debut. This is the Hellhound, Devante King. All right, all right. Looks like Devante King is here. We've got the Raptor Master in place. Raptor Master versus Hellhound. They're going to tear each other apart. Alex, these two competitors, I know they can't wait to get to it. Are you ready to go? Yes, sir. I'm ready. He is ready because he is half of the best broadcasting team in the business. And if he is ready, we'll go to our competitors. Gentlemen, are you ready to get this thing underway? Jonathan. Yes. And Devante. Yep. All right. Then, fans, we are ready. It's the Geektacular League. Let's get ready to face off. And here are your rules for round number one. Gentlemen, each competitor will receive 10 questions they will be asked to the field. When we ask the question, please write it on your whiteboard. When we have finished counting down 15 seconds, you will be asked to reveal your answer. Please show your whiteboard to the camera and verbalize your answer at the same time. Please keep your hands on screen and visible at all times if possible. Gentlemen, you each have, throughout the course of this match, three repeats. That means you can ask for a question to be repeated, resetting the 15-second timer. You may also challenge once during a match. Should you dislike the way a question was worded or feel we've given an incorrect answer, please challenge. If your challenge is upheld, you will retain your challenge and the question will be thrown out or some other ruling will be made. Should your challenge be overturned, you will lose your challenge for the remainder of the match. There is no stealing in round number one. But we have the rules, gentlemen. If you are ready, we will get going. And for that, and your very first question, because he's number one, I'm going to let him ask number one question, my man, Alex Frost. Thank you very much. Elk, your first question comes in the category of Middle Earth. While inside the Prancing Pony, what assumed name does Frodo take to hide from the Nazgul? Very, very interesting. I use an assumed name sometimes, Alex, but that's mostly to hide from creditors and ex-girlfriends. How many creditors do you have exactly? Less than I do ex-girlfriends, Alex. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. I feel like there might have been hope for a repeat there. So we will go. Is there a repeat? Uh, I don't believe so. No. The moment did All not right. say anything, and we're going to go ahead and get our answers from Jonathan. Riverton. And that is incorrect. Devante. Yeah, I, I, I forgot. All right. The correct answer we're looking for is Underhill. Underhill. All right. Underhill, like a place where he lives. All right, gentlemen, no points on the board just yet, but that's only your first question. Let's keep going. Question number two is in the category of Star Wars. What actor portrays Owen Lars in the Star Wars prequels? Uh, what terrible memories. Ah, uh, yes, the Star Wars prequels, a simpler time when we all camped out and waited for a movie and then spent three years convincing ourselves it wasn't that bad. <laughs> Uh, uh, I was six, I think. Another reason I love having you here on the oh deck, Garcia. <laughs> we got five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Reminder repeats are still available. Oh, yeah. And we will go first to Devante. I couldn't pull it. Does not have the answer. We will go to Jonathan. Uh, fun fact my sister saw him in a limo once, Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton is correct. One point on the board for the Raptor Master, whose well sister had a brush with greatness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your third question comes from the category of heroes and villains. What is the name of the villain played by Jeffrey Rush in Mystery Men? 
<laughs> Mystery Men, a lot of people popping up in the last few years, Alex, and saying they think that this may be an underrated superhero gem. Agree or disagree? <laughs> agree but is it really underrated if everyone thinks so i mean come on that's fair gotta trust the opinion of the crowd and we've got five four three two one pens down all right we go to the raptor master casanova frankenstein beautiful that's another point and uh Devante? no but i didn't i didn't have it all right Oh, no, that's another miss. Falling yeah. a little bit behind, but not out of reach just yet. We've got a lot of round number one still to come. Let's go into your next question, gentlemen, which will be in the category. Reminding you once again, you do have your repeats, should you feel the need to use them. Mixed bag is your category. Mixed bag. In what movie will you find Skeksis, Uru, and Gelflings? Skeksis, Uru, and Gelflings, which to me, I mean, I don't even know if these are real words. Alex, have you, you, can you help me out here? I mean, I know a few Gelflings, but we don't really like to talk about those in a public setting, if you know what I mean. I do know exactly what you mean. Let's go to a countdown in five, four, three, to uh, repeat the question we have a repeat your question is in what fantasy film will you find skeksis uru and gelflings skeksis uru and gelflings are these ikea furniture by chance it doesn't not sound like something that would take a few hours to build. And when you're done, I mean, you have two screws left and all your screws loose in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We will go first to Devante. Use the repeat. Did it work? No, I don't think so. I put aliens. That's wrong. Aliens. Not what we were looking for. Jonathan Peck, what do you got? Also, it's a great TV show on Netflix, Labyrinth. All right. We have Labyrinth, which is also, unfortunately, incorrect. The correct answer was The Dark Crystal. Dark Damn. Crystal. I see what you did there, Jonathan. Yeah. And that's a miss that Devante is very glad to see. Oops. Damn. Yep, it's still a two-point game. Oops. So a lot of ground can be made up here. Uh, starting with your fifth question, which comes from the category of Marvel movies. What original comic book X-Men character cameos on TV news clip in X-Men 2, X-Men United? Wait, you want to get the real name or just the alias of character he plays? Either will work. Okay. Man, X-Men 2. This movie, I remember really, really enjoying it in theaters. And lately, people have been saying maybe it's not quite as good as they originally remember. But to all those people out there, I say, screw you, Rebecca Romaine in blue body paint. Uh, no, it's not good. It's just not. It's not. <laughs> and five, four, three, two... One pens down. All right, and we go to Jonathan. Dr. Hank McCoy, a.k.a. Beast. Gave us both. That's another point. And Devante. I, I spell uh, Beast. And he is on the board. There's a point for the Hellhound. Beautiful. Keeps it within a two. Very well done. Let's go to your next question. Question number six, gentlemen, is in the DCEU. Name the actor who plays Martha Wayne in Batman versus Superman. Gonna be a yikes from me. Batman versus Superman, certainly not my favorite. Uh, as far as the DCEU goes, I think we all know number one's gonna be Wonder Woman. And then behind that, they kind of jumble together. That said, there's some good stuff in the movie. I like some of the performances. I think Henry Cavill's actually doing a pretty good job with the material. Yeah. And five, four, three, 
two, one. Pens are down, and we will go to Jonathan. Laura Cohen. Laura Cohen is not correct, unfortunately. We're going to go to Devante. I got it wrong, too. I, I put Linda Cohen. Oh. Linda, also not the first name we were looking for. Gentlemen, you wanted the answer, Lauren Cohen. Lauren, yeah. And I believe it is Cohan with an A, just in case that spelling challenge were to come up if this actress comes up again in the future. Yeah, that's rough. Still just a two-point game. Uh, and we're we close. can close that gap in that seven, seventh category, which comes from the MCU. Who directed The Incredible Hulk? Oh, boy. They are asking about some very well-loved movies today in the Geektacular League. <laughs> Definitely a classic of cinema, not at all forgotten in between the really bad one everyone remembers and the appearances in the new one. movies that everyone likes. The, the one that didn't happen? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Edward Norton's probably doing fine. We've got five. Four, three, two, one. And we'll start with Jonathan. Also the director of the great TV series on Netflix, the Dark Crystal TV series, Louis Leterrier. This time he's That's got it. He's got it this time. And Devante? Louis Leterrier. All right, and that's All a point. All right, very well done. Both players hitting that one there. We're going to go in to your next question. Gentlemen, you've got three remaining in the round. This will be your pen penultimate question. That's for you, Mark Ellis. Star Trek is the category question. What classic work of literature does a Spock give Kirk for his birthday in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan? Wrath of Khan, the only Star Trek movie that you can say is maybe a little bit overrated, even if it still is the best. That's a whole lot of chess shown in that movie, all male, which I thought was interesting, but hey, it's a decent look. It's the future. That's where they're progressive. Male nudity, we like that now too, apparently. I personally am not a fan, but what I am able to do is five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Pens are down. Raptor Master. Jules Verne. Jules Verne. Incorrect, and we go to Devante. Did he get the work of literature? Uh, Tale of Two Cities. That's correct, yep. bringing him within a point. <sighs> Nailed it. He's fighting his way back in. Absolutely love the way this is shaping up now. All right. Your ninth question comes from the category of DC films. This is your penultimate question? Yes, I think it is. In Batman and Robin... Yikes. Batgirl is related to which character from the previous Batman films of the series? Once again, we only bring the movies that you absolutely love, folks, here to the Movie Trivia Face-Off Geektacular League. We don't ask questions about the ones you disliked or hated or talked about on that message board. And here's a proposal, Alex, before we get to the countdown. How about from now on, instead of penultimate question, we call it Question Eve. So much more festive. Sure. As you know, I love the holidays. Absolutely. And five, four, three, two, one. All right. And that's pens down. Can we go to Jonathan first? Alfred Pennyworth. That's a point. Absolutely correct. And Devante? Alfred. Alfred, acceptable. I believe Alfred. that's going to be another point on the board all right so we've got a one point game right now as we have one question remaining in round number one it could be tied it could be a two-point gap let's see what happens gentlemen your final round one question no bonus questions today wizarding world in the chamber of secrets what do the students have to repot in herbology Repot or replant in the herbology classroom in Chamber of Secrets. 
Now, these are movies I do actually like, though you have to have a favorite and the least favorite among the series. And if your favorite is anything other than Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, everyone else <laughs> will have good taste. And I will say, it's not that bad. Give it a shot. You are the master of the hottest takes here tonight. Um, but far be it for me to argue, Wizarding World, much more your realm if we ever talk about Middle Earth, then I'll have a say. Absolutely. And if we ever talk about Middle Earth, you'll be having a seizure because I don't talk to people about Middle Earth. <laughs> Call a doctor is what I'm saying. And gentlemen, in five, four, three, two, one. All right. Our pens are down for your final question and your final chance at the point in round one. Jonathan, what do you have? The Screaming Root. The Screaming Root, a very apt title. It seems like he was right there on the cusp, but not quite what we were looking for. Devante. Yeah, I just said, I put, put Screaming Plants. I couldn't remember the name. Once again, both competitors, they knew it. It was right in there. We were looking for Mandrakes or, and this Mandrake. one's for you, I have to do it, even though I dislike you, Mr. Garcia, Mandragora. Yep. For our longtime MTFO fans, you'll remember that particular incident. All right, so round number one in the books, which means we've got a whole lot more match coming our way. But here's what I'm seeing, Alex. I'm seeing two competitors both fighting for those questions. Couldn't get every single one, but we've still got a nice tight game at five to four. Only one point separates them, which means they are going to have to be very careful in round number two, because as we know, everything can change when that wheel's in play and the steals they are coming into effect could be very interesting. Always is, always is. All right. So, gentlemen, we will get into round number two. I will remind you, one repeat has been used by Devante King. And we will go ahead and get you the rules for round number two. <laughs> round number two will be the wheel round. Each competitor will spin the wheel. On that wheel are various geek-tacular categories. Whatever category you land on, you will, if you just choose to select it, or if it is selected for you, you will be given five questions in the realm of that particular film each question is worth two points should you not know the answer or wish to reduce the value you can opt for multiple choice in which case the question value goes on to one point and you will be given four potential answers from which to choose the answer you would like steals are in effect so if you miss a question in this round your opponent will be able to steal for the current value of the question all right so once again, one repeat used, everything else is on the board, and your categories on the wheel today, gentlemen, will be Back to the Future, DC, Star Trek, Middle Earth, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtle Power, Star Wars, Marvel, DC Extended Universe, Wizarding World, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Jonathan, you are currently in the lead by one point, so you are given the option. Would you like to go first, or would you like to defer to the Hellhound? I'll spin first. All right, you got it. The spin is in. We are going to get that wheel going for him right now. Now, if you're looking at this board, Alex, if you're playing this match, what slice do you want? Because I think you want that one right there. <laughs> I think this one right here, spinner's choice, the pick of the litter. Oh, no. What's he going to do? Hmm. There's a lot of strategy talk. I know when I watch Schmodown, I know you watch Schmodown, Alex. There's a lot of talk about the strategy, of what you do with a spinner's That's choice, with an opponent's do. choice. I know Bateman would have an opinion on this one. But the opinion that we really need is Jonathan. And I think he's going to go with Back to the Future, considering that fun co-pop of Doc Emmett Brown that he's holding out there. All right. Jonathan, you are going to do Back to the Future? Devante, when your round comes up, you will be asked questions by Alex. Jonathan, okay. I will be asking you your questions in the category of Back to the Future. Five questions coming your way. Your first question. In Back to the Future 3, what letters can be seen on the side of Doc Brown's time train? Right away, we are definitely hearing that we are not going to go easy on these round two questions. That's a tough cut if I've ever heard one. Multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are A, HVR, B, HVT, C, WRA, or D, ELB. D? D. 
his initials for Emmett Brown. That is correct for a point. Jonathan putting up one there. Well used, multiple choice. Jonathan, your next question in this round. Which song is playing as Marty enters the Cafe 80s in part two? What, what song in part two? What song is playing as Marty enters the Cafe 80s in part two? Uh, Beat It by Michael Jackson. No hesitation. He has the answer. He is correct. Two more points on the board, bringing you up to eight. He's got some good momentum. Can you keep it going, Jonathan? Question number three. At the very beginning of the trilogy, what time did Marty leave Doc's laboratory? Classic opening scene in films. Playing that guitar, that amplifier. I mean, I have no idea what Doc Brown is doing to make his money, but I do know one thing. No scientist has an amplifier like that. Multiple choice. <laughs> And your multiple choice options, Mr. Peck, are A, 9.15, B, 8.45, C, 8.25, D, 9.30. 8.25? And once again, a good use of your multiple choice, correct for a point. Four points so far in this round, two questions remaining. And now we come to your question, Eve, for round number two. At the beginning of the first movie, you see Lorraine drinking liquor. What kind of liquor is she drinking? Ooh. Yeah, I tried it out, Alex, that whole question Eve thing. I don't really like it. I think I'm going to scrap that. No. Hey. No, immediately hated it. <laughs> hey. um, multiple choice. <laughs> multiple choice. And surprise, surprise, it's stuff you might find on a bar shelf. We've got A, rum. B, whiskey, C, gin, D, vodka. Now, while he's thinking, nothing about the question being given away here, which of these liquors would you choose, Alex, <laughs> for yourself? You That's know, question. Uh, making me choose between whiskey and vodka. That's a mean thing to do when it's 1030 in the morning, my time. <laughs> Jonathan, is count him down in five, four. Vodka? Vodka, correct. Once again, very well used. Multiple choice. Definitely navigating very, very smartly through this second round. And if you say anything other than whiskey to the question I asked Alex, well, then I believe you're outright wrong. But of course, that's just my opinion. And as we all know, that matters the most. Question number five coming your way. Jonathan, your final question in this round. What does Doc call his dog in the year 1955? Copernicus. Two more big points. It definitely was a strength. Didn't quite know some of them, but he was able to get those multiple choices. And he comes away with a seven point round number two, bringing him to 12 points total, which means as we come back towards the wheel, Devante definitely going to be looking for a strong round number two to once again, keep it close and drive us into that third round where we will see who will win, who will come out and who will get their automatic entry, get that ticket punched into World War Geek. Alex, the questions will be handled by you, so take it away. All right. Devonte, you ready for your spin? Yep. All right, let's do it. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. Uh, it is I'll keep it. TMNT. Yeah. You'll keep it. Okay. Yeah. All, All right, right. Dude, as a that is here. definitely a man after my own heart. I am a lover of the Ninja Turtles, grew up in exactly the right year. I even have Michelangelo and Leonardo tattooed on my shoulder. That's mm. true. I'm going to need to see that tattoo, but all right. Let's see what we got here. Now, do you know it there is heroes in a half shell? That a bad <laughs> Thank you. So we have five questions in the category of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Your first question, what do Razor and Toka call Shredder when they meet him for the first time? Oh. I hear they're Mama? also... Yes. Two points right off the bat. That's Thought what you need to do second. in round two. Absolutely. Your second question, who portrays April O'Neil in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Turtles in Time? That's a bit meaner. 
as a Ninja Turtles fan, that one, that one's mean. Nobody remembers this movie. Ooh. Paige Turco. Two more points. Absolutely correct. All right. Doing well so far, your third question. What is the name of the cameraman played by Will Arnett in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Uh, Michael Bay edition, apparently. Yeah. Uh, Most definitely the Michael Bay film, which I think is just fine. <laughs> I've seen worse. Vern, like three, for example. Vern Fitwick. Fern Fenwick? Yeah, F-I-T-W-I-C-K. Absolutely correct for another two uh, big mm. points. Well, uh, I mean, I know how you didn't take that. at least. All right. Uh, we have been given, we have, we have the question asker giving a correct on the answer. We have a few moments. Should anyone wish to challenge? However, if they do not. Um, well, um, actually, I'm going to challenge what he said, though, because. When when Alex said Ben right, right here, you didn't exactly say what you said, Alex. So I'm going to challenge that. Very well. That is an official challenge. Jonathan, the Raptor Master Peck, using his challenge here. Let's go ahead and we'll go into it and review the question. We'll be right back, folks. So Jonathan is going to keep his challenge. We are going to go to the backup just because there was a little bit of confusion, a little bit of mishandling on my part. Sorry about that. So we're going to actually going to go to the backup question. And that is going to be, uh, what is the name of Krang's war machine from another dimension in T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Wow. I believe that is also Michael Bay edition. Once again, these are the movies that are produced by Michael Bay, although he gets a lot more credit. He did not direct these films still. Uh, multiple choice. All right. Is it the A, the Terror Drome, B, the Time Drome, C, the Technodrome, or D, the Thunder Drome? <laughs> or E, beyond the Thunder Drome. Uh, <laughs> C? C, C te the Technodrome. Yeah. Is correct. Is absolutely correct. Gets another two big points. Well, it was it was just one for multiple choice. I oh, believe. I apologize. I apologize. One point. One point on the board for oh. Devante. Thank you. All right. Your fourth question in the category of TMNT, the ooze canister seen in... Oh, goodness. What is this? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. The Secret of the Ooze. It just cuts off. Why is this happening? <laughs> I see that. Has what letters written on it? What letters? Yes, what letters? We are learning today, folks. If you are in the movie trivia face-off, make sure that you read all the letters printed on all the things because we will ask you what they are. Uh, oh, my God. T-G-R-I? Absolutely correct. What a pull. What a, two man. Points. a good choice of category for him here. All right. And your fifth question for an almost spotless round here. Where do the turtles fight Shredder at the end of the 2014 film? Oh, oh. Multiple choice. Cause I, I All right. Your multiple choice options are A, on top of a skyscraper, B, in the sewers, C, in a warehouse, or D, in a lab. It's it's on top of a skyscraper. I thought you wanted like the actual like name of the building. I don't know. Remember when I said uh, you needed to play like a veteran? Sometimes yeah. a little clarification. <laughs> is A, on yeah. top of a skyscraper is absolutely yeah. correct. 
And the correct answer to this question should have been where they fight the original Asian actor from the, from the cut that the studio didn't make them recut, where William Fickner became the villain. <laughs> Yikes. And with right. a very well done round, he has gone through Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He is a fearsome fighting fighting machine like the Ninja Turtles. He is a hero in a half show. He puts up those points and brings it to an amazing 12 to 12 tie. We are absolutely locked up. No difference in points for these competitors. The only thing off the board at this point is one repeat on Devante's side. Very very exciting as we move towards round number three. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see what categories they end up with because this one is going to be very, very close. It's already close, but it could be even closer. And a bad five-point category could be the difference maker in today's matchup. Yep, this is it. All right, gentlemen, so we will take you in to your final round. You are tied up. Moving into round number three, the rules for round number three are as follows. Each competitor will give us a series of numbers ranging from 1 to 12. You will give us three numbers from 1 to 12. These numbers will each correspond to a category of the Geek-tacular division here in the movie Trivia Face-Off. We will ask you those questions in the order you gave us the numbers, and your first question will be worth two points. Your second worth three points. Your third worth five points. Challenges and repeats are still in effect in this round, and as we have a tie between our competitors, we are going to go to the existing player. It is not his debut, Jonathan Peck. You may choose your three numbers first. Um, four, seven, and 13. I've got four, seven, and 13. And Devante, what would you Hold like? A second. Oh, is sorry. It, what's the category One, range? Oh. One through 12, 12, I believe. You're correct. We need to we need to get one more number from you, Jonathan. Oh, Lower 12. than 13. 12 it is. My bad. No, no. Absolutely my bad. Doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I'm glad to be here with the best partner in the business, Alex Frost on the desk. Please make this happen more often, people. Gotcha, All right. <laughs> and let's get the three numbers from his opponent, Devante. Uh, five, three, and eight. We have four, seven, and 12 for Jonathan. Five three and eight for Devante. And once again, we will be asking those questions. It is round number three. Alex, why don't you go ahead and ask Devante his first question? Yes, sir, I will. All right, for your two point question from your chosen fifth category that comes from the MCU. Yeah. What is the name of the robot that Loki unleashes in Thor? Oh, no. Uh... Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. All right. Second use of the repeat what is the name of the robot that loki unleashes in thor as opposed of course to the feeling that tom hiddleston unleashed in all of us when he appeared on screen in thor which was true enlightenment and true love <laughs> he's a very attractive man is what i hear what i can i don't know the destroyer the destroyer is absolutely correct for two oh, really? oh, in fact, no. the destroyer. <laughs> All right, with that, he's going to put his two points on the board, and we will go to Jonathan. Jonathan, let's see if you can do the same thing here and answer in kind. Your first category is category number four. Your two point question will correspond to the category of Star Trek. Hmm. And your question is. In Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, where do the crew find the nuclear power needed to repower the stolen bird of prey? Please be specific. I want to say something about this question, but it would give away a bit of the answer, so I'm not going to do that. <sighs> Is it a... Um... Five, 
Five. A, a marine lab? It is not a marine lab. The answer you were looking for, Jonathan, was in fact the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise. Um, Little bit tough oh. for a two-pointer, but he can still answer with his three coming at you in category number seven, Jonathan, we will be asking you, and that is the world of heroes and villains. I've been accused of being both. Let's go ahead. Your question for three points. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, what is the last thing that Sonny Birch confesses to under the effects of the truth serum? Um, in the truth serum? You will note, Alex, that I put the truth serum in quotation marks in reference to one of the characters in that film who keeps on saying, there's not a <laughs> thing as truth serum. Uh, is it um, Five? many health code violations? That is correct. Health code violations at the <sighs> restaurant puts three points on the board for Jonathan Peck and throws it back over to his opponent, Devontae King, for his next one. Yep. Needs to answer his three-point question to send it back. Chose the number three, and it comes from the category of Wizarding World. Who sends Harry a box of Amortinia Potion Spike Chocolate Cauldrons hoping to get him to fall for her, but instead Ron ends up eating love drunk himself, ruining the plan. Lavender Brown? Ooh, Lavender Brown is incorrect. We were looking for Romilda Vane. Vane, oh. Romilda Vane. I see, as a, as a Harry Potter fan myself, as a man who you've seen compete in those matches, I see oh. exactly what happened in his brain there, but just missed the correct answer. So it's going to stay with him. And that was his three-pointer, which means that it's going to come down to this for Devante, his final chance to put points on the board. Should he miss it, this will be a victory for his opponent, Jonathan Peck. If he hits it, he's going to throw it back over. And they're both looking to punch their ticket into that World War Geek event with that big win today. Oh, exciting stuff, Alex. Absolutely. He chose the number eight, which corresponds to the DCEU those hallowed halls <laughs> your five pointer what is the code name of christopher maloney's character in a man of steel excuse me christopher maloney, christopher maloney a very versatile actor he does drama he does comedy but is he memorable enough in this film for Devonte no, to oh get the God. answer <laughs> Remember, you still have your repeats on the board, and you may need them in five, four, three, two, repeat. one. All right. That is your last repeat. What is the code name of Christopher Maloney's character in Man of Steel? Oh, this is it. Five, four, three. Ra Ravager? I don't know. And your winner, yes. Justin, the Raptor Master. Yeah. Woo. We were looking for Guardian. Guardian. Guardian was the answer. Very tough five pointer from a much maligned film. I think there's some good stuff that came out of it, and there's some great stuff that came out of this match. F tight match, close match, all the way through. Kept it within a couple of points of each other, and then some stumbles in that round number three. You said it, Alex. It's going to be play like a veteran day today. And in the end, maybe a couple of those stumbles, maybe a little that inexperience showing for one of our competitors, Devante, today. Some trouble with repeats in round one as well. And he only loses at this point by one point. He could have been a little bit higher, thrown it to Jonathan instead. And with a five-pointer on the board, you never know if your opponent's going to be able to make it. That being said, Jonathan Peck is the victor today. Alex, exciting matchup. What do you say? I mean, it's... Crazy. I'm really good at this. You find I'm really good at this. I said it. You have to play like a veteran. Jumping on some of those questions in round number three right away in a 
complicated category like wizarding world you have to give it you have 15 seconds to answer every single question maybe next time for Devante, he leans back on the question takes a nice deep breath and then lets the correct answer flow from there but today it's all about the raptor master Yes, it is. And the Raptor Master and Devante King, we had our opinions on them, but we're going to hear a little bit more about both of them as we throw it to our post-match interviewer. Oh, Alex, I hate this guy. Do you hate this guy? Oh. We've been on better terms. I was hoping it was you. It's All not right. you. Let's, oh, no. <laughs> let's go ahead and we'll throw it over. Take it away, David the Spaniard Garcia. Thank you. Well, not really, but... I'm here, I'm David the Spaniard Garcia with Devonte King, the Hellhound, in his debut match. So, Devonte, I know this didn't go exactly the way, the way you wanted it to be, but I have to say, your performance was great for a debut match. You, you had a little slow start in round one, but you were able to recover and make up some ground, and you finished six to five if I have my notes correctly only one point behind so what was going through your mind when you missed those two first questions because i know that the nerves of the first match can easily get to your head yeah i think that's a lot of what happened was just the nerves because i mean i knew what underhill for frodo's i mean i've watched that movie so many times i, I knew that one and there were just a couple i think in the first round i just kind of my mind just kind of slipped. I'm I'm glad. I'm happy I came back though, because usually I can be one of those types. I like it in my head and like kind of go like two points in the first round. So I'm happy I was able to at least keep it close. So I knew if I kept it close in the first round, I would I would at least have a shot in the second round. And after that, once we were I think we were tied at the end of the second round, I knew I still had a chance. So I was just happy I kept it close most of the game. And you got that right. You end up tied in the second round with your opponent. You scored more points than your opponent, and your opponent spun opponent's choice. So what was your thought process when Jonathan spun uh, Spinner's choice? I'm sorry. Spinner's choice. Yeah. When he spun Spinner's choice, did you think, okay, this is over, or did you have confidence that with a, with a good category, you could come back? And you did come back with yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, no less. I mean, I think whenever you're down and someone always gets Spinner's choice, you always kind of get a little little nervous in there because it just seems like at that point the wheel might be against you and then i i noticed he didn't get as he i think it was a nine point at the end of his round so it's like if i could just or maybe it, it was been nine or ten it I was knew seven if I could points at the, he yeah. was 12 points so he got okay. seven points at the end of his round okay. two he had to go to multiple choice in three occasions so that's why you jumped back because you only yeah. had to go to multiple in two. Yeah, so I, I just knew that if I could get a category that I was good at and could just at least keep, once again, just keep it close. That was my whole thing, just trying to keep it close. I knew I could, I'd be all right. But uh, yeah, but spinner's choice is always rough when, especially when you're down when the, when the other near opponent gets spinner's choice. So I was just trying to hope that I, I got a category which I knew, which was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I felt pretty good in. So I was, I was pretty happy. Yeah, and you put that on the wheel, and rightfully yeah. so. You, uh, you had three questions for two big points, and hell of a pulse, I have to say. And I have to ask you. I have to ask you about this, because it happened. It probably will cause a controversy in the chat. So the challenge, what did you say in your mind? <laughs> I knew, uh, in my mind, I knew it was burn fidwig but i knew i might have mispronounced it so i tried spelling it before he could ever because i don't think he actually said i was incorrect but i kind of saw his face so i i spelled it out yeah. and then it was and then but i mean it, I, I thought it was a it was a fair challenge it, it's what what happened it's you can't really change yeah. at the end so i think i still ended up i may have had to go to multiple choice of the second one so i didn't i guess it kind of hurt me but it didn't really hurt me that much but yeah, I don't know. I, I felt like it was. It, it, it's what it was. <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan is a veteran of the fan leagues in yeah. general, and he knows how to use and when to use those challenges. And hey, you're a rookie. You will 
learn the strategy of the game. You will learn how to play. I had to learn that the hard way, believe me. Yeah. So, third round, two-pointer, you look desperate on that one, and <laughs> I guess you had to have it in the back of your mind, because you're, I don't know if you make made an educated guess, but it was the correct guess. Yeah. I, it was it was kind of a guess, because like, I felt like the Destroyer was just kind of, it was there, but I was like, that just seems too basic, of, I guess, basic of an answer. Like, I was like, it has to be another name. And so I was like, that's the only name that came to us. I was like, whatever, I'll just say Destroyer. And maybe, maybe it was and actually ended up being the answer. Well, in those comic books, I mean, those characters are based on comic books, comic books yeah. written in the 60s, the 70s. And yeah. those times we were yeah. the basics. So, <laughs> and now the three, your three-pointer in the uh, world. Yeah. So I saw your face, you knew Lavender, so you knew exactly what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. You were, you, but again, the inexperience, taking that time, maybe even using your repeat. Do you think you could have pulled Robin Levain if you took a second to think about it? Uh, maybe, but I've, I think if I would have taken them, maybe a little bit more time would have gotten there, but like in the movie, I just remember Lavender Brown, and for and it just came like the first thing that came to my mind. And usually, when something like jumps out, jumps out at me really quick like that, it's usually right. So I was like, you know, what, I'm just gonna go with it, and it ended up being wrong. So I think if I would have slowed down, it might have, I might have gotten there, but I probably still would have said Lavender Brown because that was just the first thing that popped in my head. So and then a tough, tough five pointer in a movie that yeah. is controversial to say the least. That did it to you, but nothing to hang your head about. Any match that's not a KO or a TKO that you threw back to your opponent, you fought back from a deficit in round two. You played great for your first match. Do you want to come back? And if you want to come back, who do you want to face? I mean, yeah, I, I absolutely want to come back. And then, I mean, I'll play anyone, really. I just just want to play. So whoever, whoever you guys feel like I should be play next, I'd be happy to play. Okay, so that's up to Cody Morissette, the Geek Tackler Commissioner. This was the unfortunately, unfortunate second place finisher today. Devonte, the Hellhound King. Now I will be back with your winner today, Jonathan, the Raptor Master Peck. So, Jonathan, congratulations, your first win in the movie trivia face-off. How are you feeling? Whew. Wow, uh, I finally got a W on my belt, so finally at last we're here. And apparently I was a little, got startled up for a moment though. And I just want to say we're right at the bat though. Devontae put up a great fight though. And I was getting a little worried for a moment if he somehow may pull it up right here. And he did a great job on it, giving me all the roses in some instances. So I just want to say thank him on that though. And Wow, just finally got my very first victory on face off. Just finally. Yeah, it's about time. Jonathan Peck, a, a person who writes a lot of questions for the Schmodown, and he proved that he can answer some questions as well. So now, Jonathan, first round, you scored six points. Were you happy with that performance in round one, or would you have expected to hit some of the questions you missed? Some of the questions missed, yes. It's only one little tiny bit of a question right here. I, for myself and my answering right here, I kind of know what I'm getting at right here with some of the questions I answered. So that is a little bit expected here, except for maybe for one a little bit more. So, okay. Now, round two, you got Spinner's Choice and you go with Back to the Future instead of MCU, which has been a really good strength of yours lately. You even have like, I don't remember, you have the Gauntlet. But I don't remember. Don't don't mind me. <laughs> so um, you decide to go to Back to the Future, and the questions seem to be a little harder than what you anticipated. A little anticipate, yeah. And you said that you kind of add a question that what type of drink that Lorraine drinks right here. I was like, really? And I thought <laughs> when I went for multiple choice right here, I thought, wait a minute, what type of drink is this? I said vodka gin. All the alcohols, and I was like, Jen is like, like one of the choices right here. And it's like, 
yeah, it's one of those choices. Like, okay, yeah, here. And <laughs> in for me, my real strength is Back to the Future because Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies of all time. So when it's on the wheel and it's just been a try, it's like, first time, I'll get it right here. MC is my really my second strength right here, though. But at the same time, I can, I'm really glad that the strength is on the wheel right here. And finally, experience my true knowledge of my geek self right here in this community right here. Finally got to show it. And then your three pointer pulling it out of the bat that made you the that gave you the victory. So, what was your thought process when you missed that Star Trek question? The USS Enterprise that made have seemed a little too obvious for an answer, but the three pointer you pulled it right out of the bag. So, what was your what was going through your mind when? you when you knew now the bounty had to answer either his three or his five to send it back to you and possibly you had to answer your five uh, uh yeah uh what i was thinking about that question though is i do know what he said though is between like maybe murders and stuff or in between that or health code violations right here and i had to think real hard of what he actually said though and i was like that health code violations. So I'm gonna go with the only thing my guy's telling me, which is health code violations. So I just said health code violations and got my answer. And which ironically, because the character who said it is Walton Goggins right here. <laughs> That's yeah. <laughs> I don't forget about that. No, no, what? What? Don't forget it. Water, what? Don't water. So you Walton. for all movie three face of fans. That's also something <laughs> you we you guys will remember for for um, Jonathan's match against Bruce the Shark, Sandy Robinson. But now, Jonathan, with this win, it means you have your ticket for World War Geek. A lot of competitors, a lot of great, great competitors in that. But you have the chance to become the first ever movie trivia face of Geektacular champion. Wow. I got to build it up right here. I finally got a W on my belt right here. And then it's time I got to step it up right here. Though. Just no more going to air. When World War D comes around, the Rat Master's coming. And he will be coming for it right here. All right, so with that warning for all us Geektacular players, I am going to send it back to the desk with Modern 1 and Modern 2. And we are back from our post-match interviews with David, <laughs> the Spaniard, Garcia. I guess I'll be more on one today, but what we had here was an amazing matchup between two competitors. Very close, couple questions missed, so not the highest scoring we've ever seen, but definitely a lot of fight in both guys. Some very impressive answers in round two. More proof, as always, that folks, it's not just the big show where the lights can dazzle your eyes. One competitor leaves with his victory, his ticket into World War Geek. Jonathan, the Raptor Master Peck, will be competing in that event. And the other competitor leaves with something that Jonathan started this match with, a little bit more experience here in the fan leagues, here in the movie trivia face-off, and that may in the future get him that win. It was very close at times. Alex, I mean, we got Jonathan Peck entering World War Geek. We've got Devontae King, who I am certainly excited to see come back. What do you think about today's matchup? Well, let me start off by saying this. Devontae King is going to be just fine. His future is bright. He stepped in here. There was a change of opponents and he still made it into round three. There are many people that compete in the fan leagues that can't quite say that they've done the same thing. But Jonathan Peck is going on to World War Geek. He's somebody that is kind of an elder statesman in the fan leagues. He's been around here for a minute looking for that first win. He finally got it here today. We'll be seeing him down the line at World War Geek. Devante maybe still has a shot to get there, but he's going to have some work to do. Absolutely nothing wrong with putting in a little bit of hard work and with coming up with a new, another match, maybe a potential victory to move yourself forward in a very competitive, very stacked Geek-tacular division. I can't wait for World War Geek coming up. That event is going to be so exciting. And of course, I'll be there as the face of the face-off, the voice of the face-off, officially moron number one, and as always, the hardest working man as well. But if you want to talk about hardworking people, don't forget, guys, give a lot of love to all the people you see scrolling by on the bottom of your screen. We've got all of our editors, 
our question writers, everybody who chips in and helps out here in this, a fan league. We are run by the fans. We are not for profit. We do it all so you can get that entertainment out there. Give them all a whole lot of love here at the desk with the best in the biz, Alex Frost, and his best friend, Andrew the Elk Elk. We're going to sign off with some words of wisdom, a holy prayer from what five-year-old me believed was the gospel, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in the Half Shell, Turtle Power. I'll see you folks next time we face off.